my name is Emery Yomas. I want to talk about our S2AI screw um, series and studies. So the uh, S2AI screw is a modification of the traditional Iliac screw um, technique, uh, which was first described by uh, Schulter and Jusnadal like in the mid-90s, 95. Um, I think, and uh, there you see both techniques on the left side. You see, um, on the left side, you see, which one is it? Top, which, one. top one. Did you download? No. Okay. Anyway, um, you see on the left side the uh, usual iliac screw uh, placement where you use the PSIS as an entry point and aim towards the AIS. And um, on the right side, you see the S2AI screw placement. And um, there are several indications for, uh, in general, for a, a lumbopelvic fixation, unstable uh, posterior fractures, non-unions, lung fusions, tumor or stimulitis with bone loss, etc., uh, etc. Et and um, the big advantage of the s 2 i screw is that it uh, crosses um, three cortices, and therefore it has biomechanically a higher pull-out strength. Um, as uh, O'Brien showed in 2003, there are basically like two biomechanical zones in, um, in the area of the sacrum and the ilium. The zone one is like the upper part of the AS1, and zone two is um, the, the sacred ala and the S2 to the tip of the coccyx, and zone three is the ilium. And when you go from zone one to zone three, you increase the strength, the biomechanical strength, like of the bone stock, and um, oh, sorry, wrong side. So, and uh, furthermore, it is uh, described in the literature that you have less complications. So when we put that all together, why are we doing this study? Uh, when you did the screenshot from today, there are like roughly more than 40 publications about the s 2 ai screw placement. And um, so and that was my initial thought as well, like when um, Dr. Skunian came up and said, like, let's do a paper about the S2 AI screw placement. And I was like, okay, there are like more than 40 papers out in PubMed. And he was like, yeah, but when you look like closely and um, a little bit more, let's say, critically on the papers, there are big variations in the technical descriptions and on which angle to use. There are uh, freehand techniques described, CT-based uh, techniques uh, with fluoroscopic guidance. So there's a huge variety. And we said, OK, we're going to come up and do a technical guide for the placement. So uh, it is important to know that when you do such a study, um, you cannot say, like, really uh, fix that you use a 10 degree caudal angulation or lateral angulation because of the, um, the um, sacral shape, uh, shape and the pelvic shape changes from patient to patient. So, we, but we want to do it as uh, exactly and precisely as possible. And uh, what the studies are. Uh, all the studies which are out there, like more or less confirm that you use the um, the midpoint between the S1 frame and the S2 frame. Take the midpoint and go like roughly 10 millimeters laterally, and that is the uh, insertion point for an S2 AI screw. And then you have need a degree of 20 to 30 degrees colorly based on the cycle shape, and 30 to 40 degrees laterally to get the right angle. Furthermore, we, uh, even though there are uh, papers about the freehand technique, we prefer a fluoroscopic guidance mm -hmm. and uh, to avoid uh, placement of the screw in the acetabulum or like um, in the uh, greater sciatic notch. So we want to avoid the misplacement. You can use an elevator. And um, as you see here, this is. Uh, fluoroscopic imaging, uh, here you see the S1 frame and here the upper part of the S1 body, here the contralateral S S1 jo S um, SI joint, here you see the S2 frame, we use S4 as uh, before and shown on the sawbone, we use the middle uh, between S2, uh, S1 and S2 uh, frame and then we go like 10 millimeter laterally and um, 
use our 10 to 20 degree caudal angulation and 30 to 40 degree lateral angulation. And then it is important that you aim towards the AIIS, that you have the right angle at the end, and you have to make sure using an elevator that you stay in between the iliac crest, that you don't have a screw misplacement. Those are also radiographs showing like how you cross the SI joints and how you like aim towards the AIIS because you are very close to the greater sciatic notch. This is a picture from the saw one where, you, where we show again like, okay, this is the first cortice, the second corticalis and the third corticalis and that is what is, uh, that is the biomechanical stock fundament for this high uh, prolog strength. So, and here are radiographs, um, anterior and obturator oblique, where we can show like, okay, we are above the greater sciatic notch, we are aiming to the AIIS, uh, we are in between the iliac wing, and though, uh, therefore we can make sure that this screw is correctly placed. So, and here we drill out the upper part of the iliac wing on the sawbone to show, okay, how does the screw look like when it is placed? Here, the uh, distance to the greater side of the notch, roughly about one to two centimeters. We're aiming to the AIS. The screw length is uh, between 60 and 90 millimeters in general. And um, here, you can see nicely the acetabulum and the median sacral crest to make sure that you have a, a good placement of the screw. So once we have the screw placed, uh, we want also know, and that is like, especially for young surgeons, always difficult to transist this 2D knowledge from a book in 3D, like 3D for surgical procedures. So what are anatomical considerations? So what happens when we misplace the screw? I don't have a picture now like of a misplaced screw, but you can uh, imagine that when you like misplace the screw here laterally or medially, what happens then? And that's why um, we did a an, an study, an additional study on the specimen uh, using the S2AI screw. And that is a, like you look from the outside on the iliac wing, here's the iliac crest, here's the sacrotubural ligaments, cranial caudal, and we drilled um, the external part of the bone out to show the placement of the AS ice cream. What you see here is the supragluteal nerve and the supragluteal area. So that means like when you have the wrong angulation and you misplace the um, stuli ice screw laterally, that you can hit those vascular and nerve structures. So furthermore, we did, um, we drilled out like a whole part of the iliac wing, here again cranial, here caudally, here you can see the screw, and once we replace this whole segment, you can see nicely the neurovascular relationship to the lumbosacral uh, plexus. Here the, the common uh, iliac artery, here the obturator nerve, so when you misplace the uh, screw medially or caudally, you can hit those structures. So you have to be aware of, and that's why it was so important for us to, to do a precisely as possible technical guide with pictorial, really, guidance uh, for this placement. Furthermore, like, we want to do a clinical studies, and what is, like, really, as well as biomechanically, also as technically, very, very interesting to do it to do a guide about multiple, uh, multiple iliac screw placements because like when you have like committed fractures of the sacrum or huge bone loss after tumor resection, it is very interesting what do you do in like uh, in which order and how when you need more than one uh, lumbar pelvic fixation. So, any questions? Very good.